Hello everybody, welcome to the studio. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. So today we're gonna go through the R5 menu. So you just picked up the R5, you're looking at the menu, you realize, wow, that's a pretty robust menu with a lot of options. What should I turn on? What should I turn off? How do I optimize the camera? So that's what this video is all about. We're gonna look at the menu, but before I get started, I just wanna say that there's three menus in this camera technically, because it's got an adaptive menu. So when you're in auto mode, you're gonna get one menu and it's gonna be missing a lot of features. When you're in manual mode in photo, you're gonna get one menu. When you're in manual mode in video, you're gonna get a different menu. And the video mode and photo mode have different features and some of the settings overlap and some of them don't. So it can get a little bit confusing, but for the most part, they do overlap. Whatever you set in one, it'll also affect the other. But if you're missing settings, it's most likely because you're in auto mode and those settings are just grayed out or blacked out completely and you can't even see them, all right? So with that being said, let's jump into the video and look at some settings for the R5. Okay, so first thing you gotta do is put in your copyright information and trust me, this is a lifesaver. Go to your yellow tab, page six, go down to copyright information, author's name, put in your author's name, and then copyright details, put in your copyright details, web page name, whatever, it doesn't matter, but something that connects it to you so that if, let's say you have a photo out there and someone steals the photo and says, oh, I shot this photo, it's mine, not yours, you can say, well, check the EXIF data, and if the EXIF data is there, then obviously you know who shot the photo, and if they remove the EXIF data, you have the original with the EXIF data, so there you go, right? So first thing you gotta do, put in the copyright information. All right, now we're going to yellow tab, page four, scroll down to where it says shutter down and select close. You can have your shutter stay open when you turn off the camera, or you can set it so your shutter closes when you turn off the camera. Now, there's drawbacks and benefits. The drawback is don't touch your shutter. If there's dust on it, use a little blower, blow a little dust off, but don't touch the shutter. Don't poke your finger in there. Don't put a cloth in there. Don't spit in there. You can so easily damage the shutter, so be very careful. Now, the benefit is Let's say you're shooting at a, an event or a wedding hall. Wedding halls are notoriously dusty and dirty and you gotta change lenses and then you change lenses and of course the sensor is negatively charged so dust just wants to stick to it and you get dust on your sensor. You get home, you look at your photos, you're like, no, I got dust spots and that's the worst thing ever. So I like to keep my, uh, my shutter down. I think it's an absolutely awesome feature. I really don't wanna buy cameras in the future that don't have this feature because I've had the R5 since day one, since it came out and I've had to remove dust one time off the sensor. So yes, that is awesome. Make sure you turn that on, but be careful, don't touch your shutter. All right, so if you're updating to an R5 from a 5D camera or a DSLR camera, mirrorless is great because you have autofocus tracking, which those DSLRs didn't have. I mean, some did, but it was in the, the technology was in its infancy stage. Now you can get like eye tracking, bird tracking, car tracking, you can track animal eyes. So anyway, what we gotta do, or first thing I wanna mention here is that there's two menus within, or three menus almost, within the Canon system here. You have your menu for photo mode, you have your menu for video mode, and they're both different. And if you change settings in photo mode, but you have opposite settings in video mode, when you go to video mode, those settings might be different. So just something to pay attention to. So right now we're in photo mode, and we're going to go to subject to detect. Now, if you shoot people, set it to people. If you want animals, set it to animals. If you want vehicles, set it to vehicles. And if you turn it off, the camera will just use its own judgment to decide what it wants to focus on. It'll probably prioritize human faces, but if there's no human faces, it'll jump to an animal or something like that. But you never know. You could be recording yourself and it's you know, focusing on a pigeon in the background. You don't know. So uh, I shoot people, so I keep it on people. Now, if we go over a little bit here to page three, you have these different cases, case one, two, three, four. So depending on what you shoot, you can change the case here to optimize your autofocus for you. And you can customize it as well if you want. In, in case four, you can customize the sensitivity and whatnot. But now if we jump over to video mode, all right, so now we're in autofocus page three in movie mode on the camera, and you can see it's a little bit different here. So rather than having those cases, we have a bunch of different settings. So first setting I wanna show you is movie servo AF tracking sensitivity. So depending on how sensitive you want the autofocus to be, you can switch it around. If you're shooting, let's say sports, where there's people jumping around and you're jumping between tracked objects, you wanna keep it unresponsive. But I like to keep it unlocked on because once it's locked onto something, I want it to stick. And if I touch the back of the screen and tell the camera to focus on something else, then it'll focus on something else. So I wanna have complete control over that. I keep it unlocked on. 
And the other one, switching track subjects. And here we have stick to initial priority on subject, switch subject. So I like to keep it on initial priority. So whatever I click on first, that's what it's gonna stay on. So those are two settings there in video mode. All right, so one setting I urge you to turn on if you shoot photo or video, you shoot RAW or JPEG, definitely turn this on. Go to red tab, page two, highlight tone priority. Now click on that, it says, I have mine set to D+, plus. you can turn it off, you can have D+, plus, D+, plus two. I'll let you know what D+, plus two does. There's certain situations where that's super handy, but I usually keep mine on D+. Plus. So what is it and what does it do? Now, what when you turn it on, it'll tell the camera to preserve the details in the highlights. So it'll prevent you from blowing out. Not 100% prevent you from blowing out, you still can, but it'll try and preserve as much detail as possible in the highlights so it doesn't blow out. Now, situations where this comes in handy, let's say you're shooting a sunset, you know, sun's super bright, everything around it might be a little dark, you want highlight tone priority on. Most important place for me is when I shoot weddings, the bride is in a white dress, groom is in a black tux. Of course, super high contrast, you're shooting outside in natural light, you don't want to blow out the dress and then all the details are gone because the details in the dress are important, right? So you want to turn on highlight tone priority. Now the drawback to shooting highlight tone priority is the fact that you can't shoot at ISO lower than 200. So ISO 150 are off the table. That's just the drawback of it, but that's not really a big deal because the R5 shoots great. Even at ISO 800, you get really clean images. Now the one thing, if you are shooting in contrasty situations, Canon sensors are different from Sony sensors and Nikon and Fuji and Lumix and all those other sensors. Canon makes their own sensors and Canon sensors you have to expose for the highlights and let the shadows stay dark, right? So turn on highlight tone priority, expose for the highlights, make sure the highlights are properly exposed and then you can recover all the shadows in post. That's how you shoot with a Canon camera. Video about it there, definitely check that out if you don't know that already. So that is highlight tone priority. It affects RAWs, it affects JPEGs and it affects video. So. Bonus, bonus, bonus. And the other thing I'll mention here is above highlight tone priority, we have something called highlight uh, auto lighting optimizer. And the thing is you can't have auto lighting optimizer and highlight tone priority at the same time. They can't both be on at the same time. Auto lighting optimizer only affects JPEG, so it's useless. I would definitely switch on highlight tone priority. But if highlight tone priority is grayed out, it's probably because you have auto lighting optimizer on or you have HDR mode on. So. You know, make sure all those settings are off and then turn on highlight tone priority. Okay, so exposure simulation. Go to red tab, page seven, go down. Now this isn't a setting you have to turn on or off, but this is a setting you have to be aware of because I've seen so many new photographers come into studios and they set up their cameras, they take their shot, they're like, I don't understand why it's so overexposed and I can't see anything out of my EVF. And blah. So basically, this is what it does. Modern mirrorless cameras are different from DSLRs. DSLRs, you I mean you're looking through the viewfinder, through a prism, out the front of the lens, right? There's a mirror and that whole contraption. Mirrorless doesn't have that, obviously. And what happens is the light comes in through this, the lens into the sensor. The sensor feeds that image to an LCD panel, the EVF, and you're looking at a picture of it. So when you have exposure simulation enabled, what you're seeing is exactly what the lens is seeing. So if you adjust your aperture or shutter speed ISO and you make your image too bright or too dark, you will see that right away, which is the benefit of shooting mirrorless. Now, if you're shooting in a studio environment, you're in a studio, you have your lights set up, so on and so forth. When the lights fire, they expose the shot. So in the studio, when you have your ISO set to 200 and your aperture set to F9, it's gonna create a dark image because you're indoors in a studio, F9, not a lot of light, your EVF is gonna show like completely dark and you're gonna be like, I don't understand what's going on. So what you have to do is disable exposure simulation. Then the camera's just gonna give you a generic exposure of whatever you're looking at. And then when you fire your, your exposure, boom, camera takes a shot, then you can preview your shot on the back of the screen. So it's just something to keep in mind because a lot of people are used to shooting natural light now. They don't know how to shoot in studio. So if you shoot in studio, disable exposure simulation. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the MFN hacks to switch between photo and video mode fast, and this is super essential. I have a video about it here if you wanna know more about that. I go through a bunch of different settings and setups and stuff like that. We're here, we're just gonna keep it really simple. So if you go to the orange tab, you, uh, page three, scroll down to customize buttons, 
you go down to the MFN button and then switch it to this icon here that says stills movie switching. So when you hit the MFN, you'll switch from movie mode to stills mode. And if you're in stills mode, you'll switch to movie mode. But it is important <laughs> that you switch the settings both on the photo side and video side, because if you don't, you'll switch into video mode, but you won't be able to switch back to photo mode. And the benefit to this is if you're a hybrid shooter, you can switch photo and video mode fast without having to hit the mode button, then the info button. So let's say you're shooting birds and you see a bird and you take your photos and you want to get some video now, you just hit the MFN button, boom, and you're ready to go. So that is a brilliant hack. And like I said, I have a video about that linked down below in the description. Definitely watch that because I'll give you some more info about that whole process. All right, so here's another hack for my hybrid shooters, and this is super handy if you shoot events and weddings and you wanna get hybrid coverage. So we're in photo mode right now, and if I hit the mode button, you'll see this menu pops up. I have all my photo mode features here, and if we look to the bottom, it says record movie, or movie record with video mode C3 settings. So let's talk about that for a second. There's a record button on the top of the camera, and when you hit record, if you don't set up anything, the camera will just record in whatever default mode it's in. But if you go into your video mode and you save a setting in your C3 custom functions, when you hit record from photo mode, it'll record in that C3 video mode setting. So if you set your C3 to, let's say, 4K 120 recording, you could be shooting photos. And then all of a sudden, let's say you see a bird or something happens at a wedding or whatever the case may be, you hit record, it'll start recording in slow mo 4K 120. Or if you set it to 60p or 24p or whatever the case may be, it'll record in whatever you have set to your video mode C3 setting. So that is an awesome little hack. Definitely, if you're a hybrid shooter, you want to set that up. When the R5 first came out, it suffered with a lot of overheating issues, especially if you wanted to use the high-end video recording modes. Now, Canon has done a lot in terms of firmware updates to help this camera become a better camera in terms of managing its heat, definitely check out this video on how to upgrade the firmware on the R5 if you haven't done that, because I believe around firmware 1.6.0, Canon added a feature which allowed the camera to ignore overheating warnings. So let's jump here into the menu. We are now in video mode menu. We are in the red tab, page eight, and here it says auto power off temp. By default, it'll be set to standard. You wanna set that to high, which will tell the camera to ignore overheating warnings and just keep recording. So that is a game changer. If you shoot video with the R5, definitely turn that on. A really cool thing in the Canon menu is it allows you to set your ISO speed range. So obviously you have your whole ISO range, but you can tell the camera only use ISO between this point and this point. And you can also tell the camera to do that in auto mode or manual mode, which is really cool. So here we go, ISO speed range, and this is for manual mode. I have the camera set to use a speed between ISO 50 and 12,800. But for example's sake, let's switch this to 1600 and bring this down to 6,400. Now I hit OK, and if I go here, you can see in the bottom right corner that if I roll my wheel to change my ISO, I'm stuck within that range. I can't go out of that range. So that's pretty cool, depending on what you shoot and how you shoot. Maybe you, like, you don't want to obviously set it to the, these settings, but if you set it to something more practical, then at a wedding, for example, you won't accidentally shoot at some crazy high ISO. So I like to keep mine between 50 and 12,800. Okay, so that's for manual mode. Now we have auto range. So let's say you're in aperture priority mode and you set your ISO to auto, so the camera will automatically select the ISO. You can set it here. So I tell the camera, don't go, be, don't go lower than 100 ISO and don't go above 12,800 ISO. So I can be confident in the fact that if I'm shooting an event or a wedding and it's dark, the camera's not gonna go beyond this point. And if I notice my images are turning out too dark, I can always go in this setting and change it, but the camera isn't gonna automatically pick some crazy high ISO range. And then you can also set your minimum shutter speed. So here's the info on that if you wanna read that. All right, so now we're in the orange tab, page two, and we're gonna go to shutter speed range, and it's this is the same thing we just talked about, except with shutter speed. So you can set your minimum shutter speed and your maximum shutter speed. So let's say you're shooting an event, right? You're shooting a wedding, you're shooting with an 85 and 35, 85, okay, 160th, so you don't want 
a shutter speed lower than 250 or 1 25th of a second, right? So now, boom, you set that. You can't accidentally roll the wheel or hit a wheel and change your shutter speed because this has happened to me before where I accidentally hit something and then I look at my photos later and I'm like, oh man, it's blurry. Why is it blurry? My shutter speed's too slow. So you can limit how low your shutter speed can go with this and I think that is absolutely amazing. But, but, there is one issue with this and this is for my hybrid shooters. This setting has its limitations. I don't understand because Canon has a photo mode and a video mode for all the settings in the camera, but for whatever reason, this setting goes across the board on photo mode and video mode. So if you set your lowest shutter speed to 1 25th of a second so you don't get blurry photos, when you go into video mode, the lowest shutter speed you can get is 1 25th of a second, which is too fast. Like if you're shooting 24p, you want something nice and cinematic, you want your shutter speed to be at 50th of a second. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Use this feature if you're photo only, if you're photo and video, it might be a little bit dicey. So uh, yeah, just something to consider. All right, there you go. Now you know you have all the settings you need to get started with the R5, but wait, there is one more bonus setting I wanna give you, and this is exclusive to the R5 and the R3. No other cameras in Canon's lineup have this at the moment. I'm sure the R5 Mark II and the R1, when they come out, will have this, but the R6 doesn't, the R8, the R7, the R50, they don't have this setting. So if we pop in the menu here, wrench icon, page five, save and load cam settings. Oh, I don't have a card in my camera. But basically what you can do, I have a video about it here if you wanna check out the video and watch all the details. But basically what you can do is you can save all the settings that you just created on your camera onto a memory card and then you can load them back up onto your camera. But the cool thing is, is you can have settings for weddings, you can have settings for studio shoots, you can have settings for slow-mo video shoots, you can have settings for outdoor photo shoots, and you can save all these multiple settings on one card, and then anytime you need them, you just pop it in your camera, load up the settings, and boom, you're good to go. Or heaven forbid something happens to your R5, you need to get a loaner, a rental, or you have a second shooter, somebody else with another R5, you can take your settings, boom, pop it into their camera, and now you have two cameras that are set up exactly the same way, and that is huge, especially if you need to move fast or you're shooting in a studio. So the cool thing is, is no matter, if something happens to your camera and you have your settings on a card, you're good to go. You just get another camera, pop it in, set your settings up, and you're good to go. All right, there you go, now you know. All right, this video is over, and if you want more settings on optimizing your camera for photographers, check out that video right there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, thanks for watching. Enjoy your R5s.